It's chilly out there. Let's turn on the furnace. So a while back, I was challenged to make some coins. And then I didn't do anything for a long time. But now I'm going to do it because I said I would. And I'm going to do everything I say eventually. Uh, but first, I need some tin bronze. I wasn't going to do a video about making the alloy, but I have some leftover aluminum bronze, so I figured I can compare the ingots, and that might be interesting. Plus, it gives me a chance to ramble on and on and on and on about bronze, which is always fun. So what is tin bronze, and why, why am I saying tin bronze? Well, usually, I'll get into the rambling later. But first, how do you make it? Well, you have to take copper and tin. That makes bronze. What you think of when you hear bronze, but really bronze is like a, a big term. Uh, covering a lot of alloys. More on that later. But my source of tin today is this. Lead-free solder. So tin isn't so common in day-to-day uh, -day life. Like you hear tin cans, which kind of lets you know that it used to be more of a thing. Well, now tin cans are aluminum cans. Uh, but tin is still used, especially in electronics. Most solder in contains tin, uh, especially now that they're trying to get lead out of everything. And this particular lead-free solid wire solder is 95% tin, 5% antimony. Don't know what that does, but it's mostly tin. Always buy solder uh, when you can see what the, com when the, what the composition is, because some of it doesn't really have a lot of tin. It's got a lot of the other junk in it. But this is what I'm going to use. And of course, copper from basically scrap copper. So this is going to take a while to heat. So without further ado, let's fire up the grill. It's been forever since I've done this. You would not believe how hard it was to find the lighter. Okay, so while that's going, let's chit-chat a little bit. Uh, this is the, a piece of the solder. Uh, it's mostly tin. It's pretty soft. See? Copper is pretty soft, too. And that creates a problem when you want to, like, use it for stuff, like tools. Uh, someone, a long time ago, found out if you add the two together, melt them together, they become better. You know, stiffer, harder. Uh, they hold a better edge. Not as good as steel, but, you know, you can't... It's pretty hard to use steel when you don't have a lot of iron. Similar thing happens when you add aluminum to copper. You end up with aluminum bronze. And aluminum bronze, uh, you think aluminum, why would it be harder? But the aluminum atoms and the copper atoms form a bimetallic crystal, which changes the properties. That's why people seem a little bit confused when I tell them aluminum bronze is very, very tough. Uh, it is. It is. Tin makes copper a lot tougher. And you saw how weak tin is, right? That's, this is solid. This is solid wire. It's weaker than copper. But adding it to copper makes tin bronze, which is very strong. Now, traditionally, the copper content and the tin content in bronze vary wildly. These people didn't have XRF guns in the Roman times, so they probably just used whatever they could get. It seemed to vary between like 5 and 20%, according to Wikipedia, which I totally knew off the top of my head and didn't look up before I started this video. Yeah, I'm aiming for about 10%. But really, with, with tin bronze, it's not as critical. Uh, if you're off a few percent on aluminum bronze, your hard alloy becomes shatterable alloy. That's not good. If you're off a little bit on tin bronze, who cares? It doesn't really matter that much. But tin bronze has a couple of interesting characteristics over aluminum bronze. Tin bronze isn't as tough. It's tougher than copper, but it's not as tough as aluminum bronze. However, it doesn't have such a problem with like uh, oxidation when it's molten. So it doesn't develop that hard oxide skin on the top of it as some other alloys. So it allows people to pour uh, more forgivingly. So when you see old-fashioned tin, uh, tin bronze uh, molds, they tend to be stone and they're poured vertically. So I, I saw I have a couple pictures from a museum. I might put them up on the screen. Then again, maybe not if I can't find them. But basically, there's a big hole on top, and they just dump the bronze in. And it's no problem, but I didn't do that with aluminum bronze. Because when you just dump things in, imagine you're pouring a cup of coffee, right? You put the, you put the sugar in the coffee, and you pour it in. So if you pour the coffee in after you put in the sugar, the, the pouring in the coffee turns it up enough that it mixes the sugar in. Well, imagine if that was an oxide layer. Well, you just mixed impurities into your melt. That's not good. So I had to pour uh, with a gating system designed to trap oxides and then fill slowly from the bottom. Tin bronze, you don't have to do that. You can just dump it in a hole on the top and get away with it. So that's fun. I think, I don't know for sure, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's because tin is very corrosion resistant. So aluminum bronze is pretty corrosion resistant, but to make it a little bit more corrosion resistant, they add a little tin. 
Same goes for uh, naval brass. You've heard of naval brass. Brass is zinc is a primary alloying agent. Well, naval brass is yellow brass with a little bit of zinc thrown in. Or not zinc. Tin. I'm mixing up things. I'm not a chemist. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is YouTube. You think you're getting actual knowledge here? What's wrong with you? Check it out. I'm putting some copper over the hole to heat up before I dump it in. I didn't stuff the crucible all the way, but I want to make sure things get good and hot before I add them to the melt. Cool, huh? Cool. So speaking of corrosion, bronze is pretty corrosion resistant. I'm sure you've seen some Bronze Age artifacts they pull out of the ground and they're green. Uh, and they can just kind of polish them up and they look good again. Uh, and that's pretty handy. It lasts a lot longer in the ground than iron does. Usually if you find anything that was iron, you don't find any iron. You find rust and only rust. But Bronze Age stuff uh, preserves a lot better. Because when it corrodes, when you get the corrosion, it forms a skin. That green, that green's just on the outside and that seals everything inside. So basically the corrosion protects it from other corrosion. Unless you have a chloride, I think it is, that creates what's called bronze rot, or sometimes it's called uh, uh, bronze leprosy, because a lot of these old bronze things are statues of people, and bronze rot, you, you end up losing chunks, like if it starts here, that green goes deep through the bronze and corrodes things, and then like the ear falls off, and uh, it looks like the statue becomes a guy who has leprosy, and even worse, it's contagious. Yeah, if you touch it and get some of that corrosion on your finger, and then you poke another bronze statue, well, that guy's got leprosy too. So that sucks for him, but I'm sure he doesn't care because he's made out of metal and not living. I don't know if uh, I don't know if aluminum bronze does that. Hmm. Weird. Another thing I don't know is uh, stuff about patinas with tin bronze or other bronzes too. I think silicon bronze, uh, phosphor bronze, maybe. You can, you can get these chemicals or do different things to it to accelerate the patina process and actually change it into certain colors depending on what you want instead of waiting for like the centuries to do it for you. There's a whole bunch of chemicals you can get, different processes. There's even easy ones like vinegar potato chips and other crap like that. Uh, I That would be fun to test, I think. I think I just thought of another video for the future. So I mentioned uh, silicon bronze and some other stuff. Bronze is a general term. Uh, if you hear brass, it's generally a copper alloy with zinc added. Bronze is generally a copper alloy with tin, traditionally. Although aluminum bronze or aluminum brass is aluminum added in instead of zinc. Or silicon bronze, silicon is added along with some other stuff. Or phosphor bronze, phosphorus is added as the main secondary component. And all of these, to make things way more complicated, have multiple variants with other things added in. And other proportions of these atoms and uh, who knows, maybe make it on a Thursday, it's got a different name. I, it's, it's, it's complicated, it's very complicated. And again, if you want to learn all this stuff, YouTube isn't where you find out. Books, books are where you find out. Okay, oh, and that's my cue. That is what happens when my burner starts running out of juice. That's my cue to draw scoop. Huh, I was using some dirty copper. Alright, that's not bad. Oh dear. Oh dear, here it comes. The tin bronze ingots. With inadequately scooped out dross. I sure hope the camera's framed correctly for this. Ooh. That's looking gross. I dropped a bunch of copper into the furnace too. That's not good. My hair dryer is also running out of uh, juice. Not to fret, I have a, uh, a thing for that. I actually have the air pump out of a mattress. Out of an inflatable mattress. Check it out. We'll let those cool a bit first. Man, those things are heavy. Uh, 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 uh. They are braised to the cake pan. Well, nice knowing you, cake pan. I will destroy you later.
And here they are! Well, here they are. These are leftover aluminum bronze ingots. I think from... Whoa, that looks bad. I think these are from the pour where I made the hammer. Uh, and these are these are the bronze ingots. See? They're, they're a little bit different color than copper. These are very heavy. Bronze is denser than steel, so it's very, very, very heavy. And I'm gonna run a couple of comparisons here. See, for one, the color is different. You know, this is aluminum bronze is more brassy looking. Just let me find one with a nice clean bottom. This one. I got this one. And this, that's not a clean bottom. But to test the strength, I'm gonna whack this with a pick end on this hammer and then whack this and see which one causes a bigger dent. Now these were both poured and dumped into a bucket of water. So they were quenched as ingots. So I don't know what that does to the different alloys. Who knows? I'm, I'm not a scientist. We're going to do the hammer test. I'm, I'm not a scientist, but I can use a hammer. Aluminum bronze. Yeah. Now this is a hardened steel hammer. Now time for the bronze. And not my thumb. I guess side by side they both cause dents about the same amount, perhaps. I don't know what that means, but next test, I suppose, is brittleness, although that would have tested the brittleness. Nope, didn't break. Now, if you remember the very first time that I made aluminum bronze and poured into that big mold that was a failure, it was very brittle. So if I would have made an ingot of that and did this, it would have shattered because uh, aluminum bronze is a little more picky. If you put in too much aluminum, it gets harder and harder and harder until it becomes brittle and turns into basically glass, which is super hard. Glass, super hard. It shatters easily, but it's super hard on the, on the hardness scale. And aluminum bronze will do that. Normal bronze, not so much. So uh, yeah, I think it's, it's cool looking and shiny and heavy. And that just makes, that just makes me happy, that smack and noise. You know, they use this stuff for bells, too. It has a good ring to it, uh, certain alloys anyway, so that might be fun to try eventually, but, but no, I have, I have other things I'm gonna cast with bronze first. Oh yeah, see this brazed onto the, the tin, the cake, the cupcake tin, whatever it's called. Yeah, this is uh, what some of it looks like after removing from the ingots. So that's dead now.